it's Danielle with Willow Creek Farmery. Uh, thank you for tuning back into the channel. On today's video, we're actually going to make some blueberry jam. Uh, we were grateful enough to actually have a neighbor come by and offer us to raid his blueberry bushes. And so we were able to walk away with about seven and a half, maybe eight gallons of blueberries. And so I found a recipe online that actually only uses three ingredients. And so we're gonna try to make these, uh, we're gonna try to make blueberry jam and then also water bath it. So that way it can be shelf stable for about 12 to 18 months. So I'd like you to join me as I go through this process. Um, but first, I just want to let you know the ingredients that we're going to be using. So, three ingredients. Obviously, number one is going to be our blueberries. Number two is going to be 100% lemon juice. And number three is going to be granulated sugar. Now, as far as utensils that you will need, you will need a pot. Um, I would also say a potato smasher or a wooden spoon. And you'll also need a really deep pot. Um, for the water bathing um, portion of this and then of course your measuring utensils so you'll only need um, one measuring cup that is one cup in size and then you'll also need a measuring um, spoon that is one tablespoon so that's all we're going to use in this setup here so without further ado I am going to turn you around and we're gonna go through the process of washing said blueberries. Um, I'm gonna show you how then I get those juices from there and we get everything ready for the canning process. So stay tuned with us. This shouldn't be a super long video, but I hope you find it helpful, um, especially with it just being minimal ingredients. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and wash this. Um, I have the sprinkle setting on here, so we're just gonna go through and rinse them really good make sure that we don't see any issues and if there's any that just kind of look already bursted I'm probably gonna take them out and then of course you see there's a couple in here that aren't like quite right they're like a reddish color too you can take them out because it will probably affect it and make it a little bit more tart so for me I'm gonna take these and set them to the side And I'm making a mess with this splattering. So I am going to go through and wash these, pull out the ones I don't want, and then I'll bring you back to the video. All right, now that we're done rinsing and sorting our blueberries, we're just going to go ahead, take it over here to our pan, and we are going to dump these blueberries very carefully. Hopefully, you don't knock them down. And we're going to put them in there. So you'll see I left just a few of these, maybe slightly redder ones in there just because I like the sweetness and the tart kind of play off of each other. But I did get the majority of them out. Um, but at this point, you know, if you want to, you can, you know, re-look through your blueberries, see if there's any that you don't really want in there. And of course, take them out. Now, at this point, we are going to, since we have nine cups of fresh blueberries, um, our goal with this recipe is to make 20 pints of blueberry jam. So I'm going to use 10 cups of granulated sugar and 10 tablespoons of lemon juice in this mixture. And we're gonna put it on top of like a medium heat. We're gonna start squishing our blueberries and we wanna kinda let it cook at a medium temperature until all of the sugar is dissolved. Okay. So we're back. I have now added my 10 cups of granulated sugar and 10 tablespoons, tablespoon, tablespoons of lemon juice. Um, so you can see it's kind of like a super duper sugary mess right this moment. And I've gone ahead with a wooden spoon and I'm starting to bust my blueberries so that way they can start releasing their juices. But also keep in mind, a good bit of this is also gonna be done as it starts heating up. Um, blueberries will naturally just start popping and releasing those juices as they get warmer. But I kind of like move the process along. Now, don't be scared if your blueberry jam starts to look like it's just literally 
gobs and gobs of sugar. Um, because that lemon juice and then some of the tartness from your blueberry are gonna really um, help even that flavor out. And keep in mind too that, you know, if it is a little too sweet for you, you can always add more lemon juice down the road and kind of just saute it down a little bit more um, before actually putting it in the jars. So I'm gonna continue to break these blueberries up and continue to let this cook so we can get all the sugar actually dissolved. And we'll bring you back. We are already boiling quite well. Um, you do want to stir pretty continuously because if you do walk away from this for a minute or two, it will overflow. Um, and telling you from experience, you'll have blueberry sauce all over your stove, all over your floor. It's wonderful. So I'd recommend, you know, giving it a good stir every, what, 45 seconds to a minute uh, just through the boiling process. And remember, we are going to boil it for 20 minutes. And right now, we are now on about seven minutes left on our process here. And once we finish that seven minutes, you should see um, the blueberry jam really sticking to the back of your spoon pretty well. Right now, you can see I'm still getting some of the sauce, but it's not like just sticking and staying. So I'll show you what that looks like once we get to the end of that seven minutes. So we're going to just keep stirring here away. And once we get to the end of that, we'll bring you back. All right, y'all, our timer just went off. We're gonna go ahead and turn our burner off. And let this just kind of quit simmering all on its own. And I wish you guys could smell this, y'all, because it is just delicious smelling right now I mean I honestly would love to just eat it all up myself but we cannot do that so when I say sticking to the back of the spoon when it's done boiling this is what I'm talking about so you're going like this and it takes a second for it to fall off Let's see if we can get another one and you see that really wanting to stick I mean it's still gonna come off potentially but when you know it's done is when it's starting to do that, that stick to the back of the spoon. So this kind of came off. But we're going to let it kind of chill out for a few minutes so it's no longer boiling. And then we're going to start pouring into our jars. And for the pouring portion, you can really use whatever you feel comfortable. Like... Obviously, I could use a really big ladle if I wanted to, um, to just be on the safe side. For me, I'm probably just going to use my Pioneer Woman measuring cup and pour it in there because it does have these little spots on the side. Or kind of has a lip to it and it makes it really easy for me to pour. Uh, but to each their own. 